State legislatures across the country have been battling over election laws since the ballot boxes were put away after the 2020 presidential race. Kentucky is one of the states that made election reforms, and unlike most states where there is a Republican supermajority in the legislature, lawmakers there sent a sweeping bipartisan bill expanding voting access to the governor's desk. A new article by CBS political reporter Adam Brewster and CBSN Washington reporter Caitlin Huey Burns explores just how they did it and what comes next. So Adam is joining us now to break it all down. Yeah, this is definitely a departure from a trend, Adam. Um, first off, can you give us some background on the state's previous laws and where this bill stands right now? So. Kentucky had strict voting laws. They didn't allow for no excuse absentee voting. You had to have um, an excuse to vote by mail. There was no in-person early voting. Um, voting ended at six o'clock. People who did vote by mail, there's a lot of technical requirements um, that you have to hit. They have an ID requirement in Kentucky, but it is not one of these stricter ID requirements compared to the laws that some other states have on their books. And they amended some of those laws during the pandemic, and some of those things uh, they found were rather successful. And so uh, the law passed through the state legislature, it passed the state house, it passed through the state senate, it is headed to the governor's desk. His team says, you know, he's reviewing all of the bills that have passed and, you know, should decide in the next week or so whether he's going to sign it. Uh, the stakeholders, the people who have been supporting this bill, the people we spoke to, you know, everyone seems hopeful uh, that uh, Governor Andy Bashir, who's a Democrat, will sign it. It is Republicans, as you mentioned, who control. Um, the legislature there. And what this law does is it does add some of those things that were put in place before the pandemic. Three days of early voting, it allows for vote centers. So it allows a county to set up a single site where anyone in the county can come if they aren't uh, close to their precinct. Uh, they can go to that vote center. Um, and it also allows for uh, curing of signatures. And there is still an, an excuse required um, to vote by mail, though. That is not something um, that was repealed in this. So the bill passed the Senate 33 to 3 and the House 91 to 3. Why did this bill receive this much bipartisan support? It's interesting now in the day, that, in the times that we're living in. Well, Kentucky's Republican Secretary of State, Michael Adams, told us that part of it was because the November election was so successful in Kentucky and people liked the changes that they saw that were put in place because of the pandemic. Um, now, 2020 was a good year for Republicans in Kentucky. Uh, they expanded their majorities in the state legislature. President Trump and Senator Mitch McConnell easily uh, won the state. So this was not a close election. And Adams did admit that this might have been a harder thing to accomplish had Joe Biden, uh, President Biden, won the state. So this was this was something that the uh, that there was goodwill on both sides. The Republican uh, representative who sponsored the bill, who helped kind of um, lead it through the House side, told me that she didn't want this to be a partisan process because once you get into the partisan uh, nature of things, whoever controls the majority will just undo what the last majority did, and that she didn't want to see the laws go back to how they were before the pandemic and knew if they did nothing that that was going to be what it was reverted to. And on the Democratic side, look, Republicans didn't need any Democrats on this. But they chose to talk to a bunch of election officials, see what election officials liked from those changes and incorporate some of those uh, new changes. And Democrats said, look, we've seen what other southern states have been doing. And this was something that put us a step forward. It was a small step forward, but a step forward rather than a step backwards. So it was something that many members of the Democratic caucus uh, signed on to support. I'm still sort of, I can, maybe I've become cynical now because I'm still, <laughs> this is so confounding because, you know, we see what's happening in Georgia where, you know, they passed perhaps the most restrictive uh, voting election laws, people comparing it to, to Jim Crow. Um, and, and, you know, the argument is, is that Republicans are looking to solidify um, the voters that make up their base and, and make it difficult for those who are more likely to vote. Dem for the Democratic Party to get to the ballot box. So I, it, it seems like in Kentucky, it's just a sincere effort to have as many people vote as possible, which is what democracy is all about. Is it as simple as that? And so the, the, the issue, the myth, I would say, of that high turnout always helps Democrats <laughs> and low turnout always helps Republicans was 
we didn't see that all throughout the 2020 election, right? Florida, Iowa, Ohio, all states that were good states for Republicans, uh, there was a lot of turnout. Kentucky uh, had 2.1 million voters, more voters than they've ever had in a general election. And it was a good year for Republicans there. And, and they saw that people liked some of these changes that were put in place. Now, some of the things that they put in place during the pandemic, which allowed for weeks of early voting, and as I mentioned, anyone could vote by mail, they, they didn't go as far as they allowed during the pandemic. It's only three days of early voting. One of those days is a Saturday, though. Uh, and they said that those were some of the busiest days, and they wanted to concentrate it without straining um, election officials. Uh, there's, they kept an online portal for requesting absentee ballots, which is something that helps both access for people who are able to, to vote that way and helps security because you can track the ballots. It also requires uh, paper ballots and audits, things that help security measures, things that when they brought election officials into the fold and into the discussion as they crafted this bill, uh, that is some of the things that you saw come out on the other side of this, and, and they were putting in things that people liked uh, that they had access to in 2020. Hmm. So one of, one of the things that we've, we've sort of been talking about is these restrictive voting laws that Kentucky had before the pandemic. Um, did the coronavirus play a role in somehow shaping the perception of voting in the state? Well, it, it gave them an opportunity to um, offer some things that had not been available to voters before. Kentucky has a Democratic governor, Andy Bashir, and a Republican Secretary of State, Michael Adams. And they kind of worked together before the June primary in 2020 and then again before the November 2020 election to say, okay, how can we make sure that as many people can vote as safely as possible amid this pandemic? And they allowed these expansions to go into place, and they did it in a bipartisan way. And that is something that, you know, brings faith to the table. Uh, I spoke to Josh Douglas, who's an election um, law professor at the University of Kentucky, somebody who helped provide some insights onto this bill. And he said that, you know, these, these lawmakers have worked together on election bills before, and they have an understanding of each other. And when you work together, that generates good faith, and that allows you to make further reforms going forward. So the pandemic really opened the door to allow some expansions and then it turned out people liked those expansions. And then, of course, as I mentioned, you know, Adams did say, you know, had Biden won the state, this may not be the conversation we'd be having right now. But Republicans saw this was something that their voters liked and took advantage of. So, um, you know, I brought up um, Georgia. And so I think maybe we should remind people how Georgia is sort of on the other end of, of this spectrum in terms of the law that it just passed. Can you explain to people, you know, what happened in Georgia, how it differs so much uh, from Kentucky, why you have companies like Delta and Coca-Cola, you know, sort of raising their fists, complaining about this, why you have uh, critics calling it a return to Jim Crow? How, how does the Georgia law differ from the changes that we're seeing in Kentucky? I'll start with one similarity, and that is both actually do expand early voting access in the sense that Kentucky went from zero days of early voting before the pandemic to now allowing three days of early voting if Governor Bashir signs this bill. And Georgia did actually, uh, Georgia's bill does expand weekend early voting hours. So that is one thing um, that the bills do have in common. Um, Georgia put some limits on drop boxes. Of course, there's the provision um, about uh, giving food and water to people in line. There can only be these self-service um, water stations. You know, and so we've seen a lot of pressure on companies to speak out because there was so much talk after the Georgia elections about fraud and there was none that was proven, right? So there was this idea that they were trying to fix a problem that didn't exist. And so we've seen companies come out and speak out against some of these restrictions in rather broad terms. And they've received pushback from the Republican governor and Republican lawmakers in the state who have said, well, what parts don't you like specifically? Because we've seen them say, you know, we don't like this bill as a whole. But as I mentioned, one of the things that it does do is requires more early voting hours and allows counties to still keep that Sunday voting, um, something that was not in an original version of the bill, but by the time it got to Governor Kemp's desk, um, was there. And beyond Georgia, now that the bill has passed there, where do things stand in some other states, Adam, looking to sign bills that limit voter access? Georgia was kind of the, the center of attention, the center of national attention for this issue, but it's something that we've seen around the country. One of the states that you're going to start to see a lot of talk on is Texas, and that's because last night the state Senate passed a sweeping bill 
uh, that covers a whole range of election issues. Texas already has some of the strictest voting laws in the country. Uh, the bill last night kind of uh, targets a couple of practices that were put in place by Harris County during the 2020 election. Harris County uh, is home to Houston. Um, they allowed 24-hour early voting and drive-through voting uh, during the pandemic. The state Senate bill that was passed last night puts limits on the number of hours you can have for early voting. Now, they're not tight limits, but basically you can't have that 24-hour early voting. Um, it's a regulates where you can hold uh, voting to kind of eliminate that drive-through aspect that was put in place and, and faced a legal challenge right up until uh, the last minute before the election. Um, it also, in Texas, to vote by mail, one of the reasons you can, you have to have an excuse, is if you're disabled. This bill would require you to prove that you are disabled. It allows poll watchers to record um, voters. And, and so there are a lot of concerns from voting rights groups that Texas that already has these strict laws, there are, these are more restrictions being put in place. A couple of other states to keep an eye on, um, Arizona, where there's a bill um, that deals with removing voters from the permanent early voting list if they don't vote early during two consecutive general and primary elections. Uh, it, during those election cycles. Uh, another bill that deals with adding an ID requirement. Um, Florida, another state that was a good state for Republicans and saw very high turnout, has become kind of a model for election administration. They're looking at restrictions on drop boxes and also adding some ID requirements. And then one state that people may not think about a lot is Michigan, right? Because Michigan has a Democratic governor in Gretchen Whitmer. The Republican state Senate last week introduced uh, 39 bills that cover a whole range of issues on elections. Some deal with adding early voting hours on a Saturday before elections, um, deals with pre-registrations, uh, teenagers being able to pre-register to vote when they turn 16 years old. If they're between 16 and 17 and a half years old, they can pre-register to vote. And then other bills that deal with adding ID requirements for voting absentee or voting in person or limiting drop boxes. The, the Republican legislature there if they pass the bill and Governor Whitmer vetoes it, there's an option in Michigan where Republicans can then start a petition initiative and they have to get a certain number of signatures. And if they get a certain number of signatures, they can then go vote on that bill again and go around the governor's veto. The Republican state chair in Michigan last week uh, told a group of Republican activists that is indeed their plan if Governor Whitmer vetoes some of these bills that are expected to pass um, that may deal with uh, restricting access to voting. So it's a state to keep an eye on, even though they have a Democratic governor there in Michigan. Really important and extensive reporting there, Adam. Thank you very, very much. I think a lot of people are not aware of some of these things that are happening across the country, and they sometimes may mistake what's happening in one state for perhaps uh, things that are going on in another. So you've really crystallized it for us. We appreciate it. Thank you.